Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. Part 2 of Lesson 2.4 has two objectives. We are going to use complex conjugates to write out the quotient of two complex numbers, and then we're going to find complex solutions of quadratic equations. Now in just a little bit, we're going to be dividing some complex numbers, but in order to do that, we're going to have to use something called a complex conjugate. And conjugates are two pairs of complex numbers that have opposite signs on their imaginary pieces. So if we were looking at a complex number in that standard form, like a plus bi, its conjugate would be a minus bi. So in these examples down below, like with this one in part a, it's already written in standard form. It says 3 plus i. In order to find its complex conjugate, the a value stays the same, but we change the sign on the imaginary piece. Now for this one in letter B, it's not quite written in standard form, so I'm going to flip the A and B values around real quick so it's negative 5 plus 4i. And then if we find the conjugate of this, well the A value stays the same, but we change the sign on the imaginary piece. So we get negative 5 minus 4i. What we're going to do next is a little bit of multiplying with complex conjugates. So in this first example, we're looking at 3 plus 2i. First thing we have to do is find its conjugate. It's going to be 3 minus 2i. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these things together. Now, since they're each binomials, they have two terms in them, we're going to have to FOIL it out just like we would any other binomial multiplication. So FOILing this, taking the 3 times 3, we get 9. 3 times negative 2i is negative 6i. 2i times 3 is plus 6i, and if we take 2i times negative 2i, we get negative 4i squared. And now what we're going to do is go through and simplify this down a little bit. So the negative 6i and the positive 6i just cancel each other out. If we remember from the last video, i squared is just negative 1, so this is like negative 4 times negative 1. So we could treat that as a positive 4. So then we take 9 plus 4 and we get 13. So when we multiply a complex number by its conjugate, we get a real number answer. Well, let's try this next one out. We've got 7 minus 4i. If we find its conjugate right away, that'll be 7 plus 4i. And foiling these things out, 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 4i is 28i. Negative 4i times 7 is negative 28i. And if we take negative 4i, times positive 4i, we're going to get negative 16i squared. And now simplifying this one down too. The positive 28i and the negative 28i cancel each other out. Just like before, i squared is negative 1, so we can treat this as a double negative and make it positive. So 49 plus 16, we should get 65. So again, multiplied two conjugates together and got a real number answer back. When we're doing division problems with complex numbers, our main goal is going to be to get these things written in that standard form, a plus bi. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is multiply our numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So if we're looking at this first example, we've got 2 plus i being divided by 2 minus i. So first thing we want to do is we want to find the conjugate of the denominator so that we can multiply top and bottom by that thing. So remember, just change the sign on the imaginary piece. So it's 2 plus i. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2 plus i. We are going to have to FOIL these things out. So across the top, if we take 2 times 2, we get 4. 2 times i is plus 2i. i times 2 is another plus 2i. And if we take i times i, that's plus i squared. Foiling out the bottom, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times i is plus 2i, 2 times negative i is minus 2i, and then negative i times i is negative i squared. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work on simplifying this stuff down. So on bottom, I see a plus 2i and a minus 2i canceling each other out. This negative i squared, well remember i squared is negative 1, if we throw another negative in front of that it's like a plus 1. So on bottom we could take the 4 plus 1 and get 5. Across the top, if we combine some like terms, we've got 2i and another 2i, so there's 4i's. With this i squared, again, that's just like having a negative 1. So if we take 4 minus that 1, we get 3. Now we've got this fraction, 3 plus 4i, all over 5. What we can do with this is we can unadd this fraction, so that means splitting it up into two pieces. So we could take the 3 fifths 
and add on 4i over 5. So that is our complex number in standard form. Taking a look at our next example, if we look at our complex number on bottom, we can see that there's an a value of 0. So remember, this is what's called a pure imaginary number. Well, it still has a conjugate. All we have to do is change the sign on it. So we make it a negative 2i, and we're going to multiply top and bottom by negative 2i. So if we take negative 14 times negative 2i, we get positive 28i. And on bottom, if we take 2i times negative 2i, we get negative 4i squared. But again, remember, i squared is just the same thing as negative 1. So this is negative 4 times negative 1. So that's like 28i over 4. And 28 divided by 4 is just 7i. Now with this last example, before we can do any of the, that conjugate stuff, we need to look at simplifying down the denominator on this fraction. So we've got 5i over, remember squaring something, it's like times itself. So really this is saying 2 plus 3i times another 2 plus 3i. So we're going to have to foil that out. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3i is plus 6i. 3i times 2 is plus 6i. And 3i times 3i is plus 9i squared. Simplifying it down, i squared on bottom, remember, is negative 1. So negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. Add the 4, we get negative 5. 6i and 6i is plus 12i. And on top, we still have 5i. Now we can do our conjugate stuff. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by negative 5 minus 12i is negative 60. On bottom, if we foil this stuff out, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Negative 5 times negative 12i is plus 60i. 12i times negative 5 is minus 60i. And 12i times negative 12i is negative 144i squared. Now we're going to have to simplify this stuff down too. So on top, we've got i squared, which is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 60 is positive 60. And I'm going to move the minus 25i over. On bottom, i squared again is negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 144 is positive 144. Add on the 25, we get 169. Positive 60i and negative 60i just cancel each other out. Now what we can do with this fraction, remember, is that unadding thing. So we can split this fraction up. We get 60 over 169 minus 25i over 169. Now before we get to solving some quadratic equations, we're going to do a little review of breaking down some square roots into standard form. So if we look at example A, we've got the square root of negative 14 times the square root of negative 2. Well, if we look at the square root of negative 14, remember we can break that up into 14 and negative 1. So we get the square root of 14 and the square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of negative 1 is just i, and we leave that square root of 14 alone. If we look at the square root of negative 2, doing a similar thing, we get 2 and negative 1. Take the square root of each one, we get i times root 2. Now I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. We've got i and i, so that's like i squared. Then we've got the square root of 14 times the square root of 2. Well, when we're multiplying two radicals together, what we can do is we can multiply both of those numbers together and then put them underneath one big radical. So this is like i squared times the square root of, well, 2 times 14 is 28. And now we can break this radical down. We can break the 28 down using 4 and 7. If we square root the 4, we get 2. Can't break down the square root of 7, so that's still on there. And we've still got our i squared out in front. Remember, i squared is negative 1. So if we take negative 1 times 2 root 7, we get negative 2 root 7. Taking a look at our next example, we've got the square root of negative 27 minus the square root of negative 12. So if we look at breaking these radicals down, I'm going to pull out the negative 1. And breaking down the 27, we can use 9 and 3. So I broke that into three pieces right away. If we square root each piece, the square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. If we look at the square root of 12, we can go negative 1, 4, and 3. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. 
So it's like we're taking 3i if we rearrange this, 3i root 3 minus 2i root 3. Well, we have three i's and we're subtracting two of them, so that's like having 1i root 3 as our final answer. So now what we're going to do is solve a couple of quadratic equations and then take our answers and put them in standard form. So we are going to get some complex number answers. So for this first one, we're looking at 7x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 0. We could try to factor this out, but right offhand, I don't see anything happening. So I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Labeling our numbers, 7 is a, 5 is b, 2 is c. So if we go negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 7 times 2 all over 2 times 7. Simplifying the stuff underneath the radical, 5 squared is 25. If we take negative 4 times 7, that's negative 28. Times 2 is negative 56 all over 14. Combining like terms underneath the radical, 25 minus 56 is negative 31. So we got negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 31 all over 14. 31 doesn't have any perfect square factors, but what we can do is we can take out that negative 1 and a 31. Square rooting the negative 1, we get i. Can't break down the square root of 31. So it's negative 5 plus or minus i root 31 all over 14. If we wanted to, we could do our unadding stuff with this fraction. So it would be negative 5 over 14 plus or minus i root 31 all over 14. Last example, 8x squared plus 14x plus 9 equals 0. I'm thinking we're going to have to use the quadratic formula again. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Simplifying the stuff underneath the radical, 14 squared is 196. If we take negative 4 times 8, we get negative 32. And negative 32 times 9 is negative 288 all over 16. Now again, still simplifying down the stuff underneath the radical. If, if we take 196 minus 288, we get the square root of negative 92. So we got negative 14 plus or minus the square root of negative 92 all over 16. The square root of negative 92 can be broken down. We can use a negative 1, we can use a 4, and a 23. So the square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 23 can't be broken down at all, so that's just the square root of 23. We got the negative 14 plus or minus that stuff all over 16. If we look at unadding these fractions, we've got negative 14 over 16 plus or minus 2i root 23 all over 16. And to me, it looks like we can reduce both of these fractions. The first fraction, we can divide both of those numbers by 2, so we get negative 7 eighths plus or minus. And with this other fraction, again, we've got a 2 that we can reduce in there, so we've got i root 23 all over 8. So there's our final answer. That's it as far as this video goes. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. Thanks for watching.